Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. To make sure we stay on time, I'm going to get straight into it. We want a better Cayman, a united Cayman, a prosperous Cayman, an enlightened Cayman. To get there, we must get off the path we have been on for the last four years. We will not find our Cayman in divisiveness. We will not find it in disrespect. We will not find it in ignoring the laws of the land. We will not find it in attacking people who express contrary views. No, we want our Cayman. That Cayman with those unique qualities which has made us such a success in the past. The respect which has earned us admiration in the region. The societal harmony which has made us so attractive. The economic miracle which has earned us the envy of many. We want our Cayman, one which offers opportunities to our children for the future and an excellent quality of life for our todays and tomorrows. One which enables us or enables others to become a part of us. One which cherishes our own culture and heritage, yet embraces the best of others. One which protects and preserves our natural beauty, yet offers reasonable opportunities. One in which the economy is diverse and strong and productive. One in which the needs of our youth and elderly are of equal priority. One in which the rights of all are respected. One in which we have restored trust, confidence, and pride in our country. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Cayman that I want, and I am deeply committed to. And now I am pleased to introduce you to another one of the progressives in whom the same fire burns. A young man who has already demonstrated his commitment to public service through the coaching of young people in sports for many years. He is a past president of the Rotary Club of the Cayman Islands and the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce. He has served as a deputy chairman of the Trade and Business Licensing Board and deputy chairman of the Port Authority of the Cayman Islands. He is a successful businessman being the managing director of his family's group of companies. And he's an entrepreneur at heart. Yes, he's done all of that, even though he's still relatively young. I cannot think of anyone better qualified to talk about the needs of small businesses that are the real engines of our economy. They contribute close to 70% of the job opportunities in the country. And have, they have suffered greatly over the past four years. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my colleague, number eight, who will indeed be great, Joey Hugh.